Hi, good morning guys. Today we are going to cover day 4 and we are going to focus predominantly on customer KPIs and inventory KPIs. Let's look at the metric called customer retention rate. It is an excellent metric to measure the success of a business. It indirectly measures the loyalty of a customer with the business. How it is measured? The number of customers, those who come and shop with the business year over year. So the cost of acquiring a customer is very, very high. And why it is high? The reason being companies has to spend a lot of money on various digital as well as offline marketing channels to acquire a customer. You can think of the channels such as online ads, TV ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, ad over radio, uh, companies print billboards, they send out a lot of pamphlets. So imagine to get the customers, the amount of money company spends in acquiring customer is very, very high. If the cost is spent once and if you acquire a customer and if you return the customer, then the expenditure on acquiring customers again and again will go down and that will help the business to utilize that money and give uh, and create better uh, uh, you know, customer retention policies. Uh, one minus retention rate is also known as churn rate. This metric is excellent gauge for of customer service, the product company is offering or the business is offering and the nevertheless the loyalty. The formula for the retention rate to measure is basically number of customers at the end of the period. If we subtract the new customers we acquired upon the number of customers at the start of the period. So higher the retention rate, better the company's performance. Now let's suppose a company's retention rate is going down. Then how can this will be improved? So this can be improved with tracking the customer purchase behavior, giving the customers personalized offers and recommendation, recommendations to buy. Second, developing meaningful relationships, excellent customer service, organizing some of the events uh, or online groups where giving or sharing the tips what to do in order to improve that will directly work upon developing the excellent relationship between customer care, uh, customer service and the business. And last but not least, having an excellent loyalty program. If some customer spends some money with you, how is the reward they are getting uh, for that? If customer gets good cashback, good loyalty program, then customer would like to come again and again. Let's look at the 13th metric. Uh, it is units per transaction. Units per transaction basically means the number of products a customer is buying in a single transaction. It is also referred to as basket size or items per transaction. The number of units customer bought more, that means customers are really, really happy with the product and the price that is being offered by the business. Basket size is a good metric to track if your retailer sales across multiple categories or not. If your store that carries product that complements each other or not. Larger the basket size, it basically indicates the business is doing really good in terms of fulfilling shoppers need. Basket size is calculated as the total number of units bought divided by total number of transactions. If business units per transactions are decreasing, then what are the ways to improve it? First, creating campaigns that focuses on cross-selling. Creating campaigns that focuses on upselling by product bundling. Creating such offers like buy one and get one. Improving the product placements like keeping the items which are highly bought together. And last but not least, creating 
impulse purchase in the store and having a very good store associates which can give a excellent demo to the customers and help them to shop more let's look at another important metric to measure the customer success is purchase frequency it basically means in the given period how many times a customer came and shopped with the business higher the purchase frequency it is better for the business so purchase frequency is the number of times an average customer purchases a good or services from your store in a specific time period more frequent shoppers are loyal and very less likely that they will churn loyal customers who make frequent purchases are also more likely to advocate your brand and refer to other customers purchase frequency helps you to understand your audience purchasing behavior and you can better structure your marketing activities it is calculated by the formula by number of unique orders divided by total number of unique customers assume a store or a business where purchase frequency is going down then how you will improve that first creating an excellent loyalty program that basically helps customer to come back and shop second having an excellent crm service where the executives on the floor are greeting and talking to the and giving the excellent service to the customers those who are visiting in the store and last but not least creating an excellent personalized offers to get customers come to your store and shop again and again let's look at merchandising kpis one of the most important merchandising kpi is inventory turnover it basically suggests how efficiently a business is utilizing its inventory and selling it at the faster rate so this helps uh, the business to optimize its working capital so it is also known as stock term this metric basically suggest how many times a stock is being sold in a given time period this metric basically helps business in identifying how good their inventory is doing are they selling fast moving items or are they moving are they selling slow moving items higher the inventory turnover better it is for the business if your stock turn is too low that means you are not selling inventory at faster rate and you are carrying the product which are slow moving and that will result into a dead stock inventory turnover is basically calculated as cost of goods sold upon average inventory now let's look at an example there is a retailer whose starting inventory is around 20000 dollars in a period of quarter they bought another 15000 dollar worth of inventory and at the end of the period the inventory value is at 16500 dollars so let's calculate what is the inventory turnover for this company so let's calculate cost of goods sold first so cost of goods sold is basically calculated as starting inventory plus purchase minus ending inventory so 20k is my starting inventory plus the purchase is 15k so total inventory is 35k minus the ending inventory which is $16,500 so my cost of goods sold is $18,500 now what is the average inventory average inventory is basically starting inventory plus ending inventory by 2 so starting inventory is 20k plus ending inventory is 16.5k so total stock is 36.5k by 2 that basically gives 18.25k stock now inventory turnover ratio is cost of goods sold by average inventory so 18.5k is my cost of goods sold uh, divided by 18.25k is my average inventory so the stock turn or inventory turnover ratio comes out to be 1.01 so is the 1.01 is good or bad so guys the bare minimum inventory turnover should be for a given period shall be is greater than equal to 2 so uh, equal to 2 means you are optimally uh, optimizing your inventory 
and more than two is very very good for you so in the given problem we got only 1.01 .01. that means inventory the retailer what is selling is not a fast moving item now if the inventory is not moving what the business shall do in order to improve it so first there are two ways so identify the issue when inventory turnover is low in this we need to avoid buying such products again and again second if you want to move this inventory at the faster rate then we need to work on the giving the discounts and reducing the price now if your inventory turnover is too high that is also not good for the business because higher the inventory turnover it might result into stock out issues and to avoid the stock out issues you need to always have the optimum stock and ordering procedures for the business shoppers dwell type this is one of the interesting kps for the business it basically suggests how much amount of time on an average customer spends in your store or in your business this basically highlights is calculated as the out time minus in time so the latest technologies such as video analytics has helped the business to identify shoppers dwell time so at the start of the entrance we identify the customers where they are spending more you know more time uh, in an aisle uh, we identify uh, based on the heat maps through video analytics which are the areas where customers are gathering more where they spend maximum amount of time so by identifying those areas keeping the extremely good performing store associates in that area will result into higher conversion rate the hypothesis the business has the longer the someone spends the time uh, in the store it is high likelihood that they will end up buying something so the business basically wants to know or the store basically wants to know in what are the areas or what are the prime locations within the store where people spend maximum amount of time now if some business identify the dwell time is low for them then how they can improve it first training the store associates so that they can interact with each and every customer they go attend each and every customer understand their needs requirement and guide them to the required product with the support giving them the demo second keeping the interactive displays uh, the latest things that are coming in the market where people can uh, stand in the mirror and it has plug and play options where people can choose the product and how it will look in a, on them and they can place the order there and itself and last but not least exclusive in store services if items are not available in the store then giving the arrangement to place the order online the best example i could think of for this is a biba uh, biba if you go uh, to shop with them and if you like a product but you did not find the size of that product in that particular store then they have a mechanism in built where they place the order online and that the product can be delivered to your place the last but not least and very very important metric to measure the business performance uh, is out of stock higher the out of stock rate that means the, you don't have number of sku's with you to get your customer and if you are not able to serve your customer they might end up go uh, shopping somewhere else with your competitor and you will lose them so the cost of out of stock rate is very very high it's basically in simple language when a customer goes and uh, tries to buy item and if that uh, item is not present in the store is simply called as out of stock rate the out of stock rate uh, is measured as the number of sku's out of stock divided by total sku's in the assortment for an example if i am a retailer i have 20000 sku's with me and on a given day there are 200 sku's are not available in the store so 200 divided by 20000 is basically gives me the ratio of out of stock rate which is around 
Now the impact of out of stack rate is measured as loss of sales. So those 200 products, if they were out of stock for 500 uh, for five days, and on an average the sales per day you make around 100 rupee, then the loss opportunity is how much? Is basically 200 into 5 into 100 rupees. So that basically suggests the loss of opportunity is around more than a lakh rupees. Okay, so loss sale is calculated as number of days the product was out of stock into average daily sales. Now, if out of stock rate has been really, really high for the business, then how can you prevent it or reduce it? So it can be prevented by having an improved demand forecasting of the product at the product level creating a demand forecasting model to identify exact demand and it is managed through with auto replacement system whenever the product goes below a certain threshold or automatic order is placed to the vendor or to the warehouse to get the stock in the store or in the warehouse and last but not least is to improve the supplier fill rate and reduce the lead time 